scripts. They could be the best part of a job. They could be the worst part of the job. And there's also quite interesting information hidden in them. So I was looking online uh, today and saw an article that the last remaining elements of Rhino Riley are pretty much in the process of getting removed outside of like a maintenance area uh, and basically the trough on Cheetah Chase. It's pretty much all gone. And it made me start thinking about uh, our old scripts. And I've got a few things from Rhino Riley still that uh, you'll never be able to see again. The scripts are basically uh, one of the last remnants. Uh, this is, or was, confidential information, but what it applies to isn't around anymore. Neither is the company that published it. So um, I thought it might be kind of fun to kind of take a look at it, as well as a couple of my other scripts I've got. Um, I've got the old conductor strips, scripts from Silver Dollar City. I actually have the robbery script still as well. One of the things that's very interesting about the scripts that I have used is all of them are basically strong suggestions. There are certain things that you have to hit and say, but after that, it's kind of an on-your-own thing. Brian O'Reilly was very interesting for one thing, in that we had two. You've got the official ride script, but then you've also got this. This is actually a whole packet, and we were supposed to memorize this thing. This is actually all sorts of different facts about the animals that would be on Rhino Rally, uh, some more than others. So, for example, the very first page, it's all information about Asian elephants and the habitats and fun facts. For example, one way elephants cool down is to throw dirt on their backs. The second way is to flap their large ears. And you've just got all sorts of different information about them here. Uh, the American Cape Buffalo, Stanley Crane, which generally was not on Rhino Rally, but every now and then you would see them out there, depending upon what was happening with the keepers. Vultures and guinea fowl, uh, white the white rhino, the Nile crocodile, and it's just a ton of information and facts that we could use. So if we got stuck out there, say there was an animal in the way and we couldn't drive, uh, or one of the other vehicles broke down, or just something happened and we had to sit for a little bit. We had all this information at our disposal. This was all extra. And Silver Dollar City was kind of the same way in that we did have a few extra bits that if we got stuck for some reason and stopped, uh, for example, if there was a maintenance vehicle that was having to cross the tracks ahead of us and we had to wait, we had a bunch of extra information that we could use. And so that's just all extra. That's a lot of extra. It's, uh, let me see, does it say how many pages? It's a lot of pages. It's probably a good 30 to 40 pages of extra facts and information and bibliographies. Whew. In addition to that, you had the official script. and So I pulled this out and I found it really interesting, some of the information that was in the script. Because one thing you have to learn is when to stay on it. And then you have to learn when to stay off of it. There was a number of things, not just in the animal facts, but things that were not actually in our official script that we would use. Uh, and this is actually kind of interesting. <laughs> On the back, I've actually got a schedule <laughs> written. My, probably my very first work official work schedule. Let's see. Uh, Monday, 1130 to 930. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> day one, 10-hour day. Uh, 1 to 930, 1 to 6. 11 to 9.30, another 10-hour day. 9.30 to 7, a 9-hour day. So whatever week this was, let's see, I've got 18, 23, 33. Uh, I've got 43 hours scheduled my very first week of work at Bush Gardens. I tell you, long hours. <laughs> In any case, with the script, um, they've got a backstory in here, a foreign word glossary, information that if you're working the loading station that you need to know and how to stay in character and in theme for it. Uh, how to choose your co-pilot, the guy who's going to get you lost. Uh, I, I love this. You'll need to choose a navigator. Ideally, this should be a father. Families are always entertained when dad is in the hot seat. If a father is not available, 
Choose another man in line, preferably a robust guy. It's easier for the driver to poke fun at this type of individual. Gee, can we date ourselves already? <laughs> Wonderful fun things like that. Um, and then how to turn it over to the driver. Uh, notes to rally drivers. Your role. Uh, the quality of the Rhino, Rhino Rally experience is highly dependent upon one person. You. And that's very true. A good driver made that ride. A bad one uh, failed it. But just some neat talking points here. Your role. Your unique presentation. Uh, your individual personality should come out in Rhino Rally. This will include choosing a description of... A descriptive nickname for yourself based on your real name. <laughs> Their examples are terrible. Such as Brave Brad or Rally Rita. Those are terrible. <laughs> Rhino Rally was the one attraction I worked on where we could have custom name tags. So I have my Sir Willow. Yes, I went by Sir Willow on Rhino Rally. Uh, and then somewhere around here, I'm not sure where I put it. I do actually have my Curious George name tag. And I'm trying to see. It's here somewhere. But I also use Curious George uh, in addition to my name. It depended upon what mood I was in. It's the only attraction I've worked on where we could actually have our nicknames on the badges. So that was fun. Uh, scripting without a script. So, And this is something that you learn early on. It's vital that you sound natural and believable as you speak to your passengers. The best way to accomplish this is to talk like you normally talk. Use words you normally use. Therefore, your script you'll be studying is comprised of bullet point messages, lines, and thoughts, but make them your own. That's true in anything you do. Unless you are doing something like Shakespeare, where you've got to go word for word, pretty much almost any script, you're going to be kind of tailoring it to you and how you do it. So Broadway, yes, you got to go word for word because those things everybody knows. Uh, but if you're doing something else, and especially something where you're interacting with people, uh, like Rhino Rally is the driver or the conductor or robber on the train, where you're interacting with the people on it, you want it to become you. You want it to be natural. So even though some of their lines in here are things like, And remember, this isn't a photo safari. It's a rough off-road rally, so be sure to hold on tightly to all your stuff. Hey guys, this is a rally. that It gets a little bit rough out there, so please make sure you got everything battened down, held onto, and nothing that's going to stick out of the Land Rover, because if it flies out, it's gone, and we can't go back and get it. So keep your stuff safe. Same line, tailored to me. <laughs> so it, it's really good about pointing that out. Uh, let's see, speaking in chunks. So the best way to learn a script, and this is something if you ever do any acting, is you learn it in bits and pieces. Uh, in fact, if they... Uh, if you ever get a chance to go watch them film a TV series, the actors are actually learning that chunk of the script they're filming that day. And as they finish that up, they may be looking at the next chunk, but that's how they do it, is they learn it. Okay, here's what we're filming tomorrow. That's what I'm going to work on. Here's what we're filming later on this afternoon. I'm going to work on that. And they don't memorize the whole script when you're filming that way. They learn chunks. Same thing if you're going to be working on a ride or interacting with people. Uh, animal talk. You've got to learn all those wonderful animal facts. Uh, don't just learn what's in the script. Learn what's beyond it. Um, our special guest, how do you interact with people who don't understand English? They've actually got a whole section in here on that. And then guest questions. Hey, guests are going to ask you questions. Are you going to be able to answer it? And if you don't know the answer, can you make one up? Uh, and to remember, you're not in Tampa Bay. You're along the banks of the Zambezi River in a in Africa. Use your best judgment in handling real-life questions. And remember, if you like to address a writer's real-life question without spoiling the fantasy for everyone else, you can try to answer them one-on-one -on -one for real, off-mic, as the vehicle is unloading. So yeah, we did have microphones, and if a guest really needed to know something like, hey, what show do you, do you really recommend? You turn the microphone off, or you wait till the ride's over, and then you go, okay, here's what I would suggest. Just neat bits of advice. I love all this. This is all tips this isn't even script and just all sorts of different things to remember again some of this is actually pretty dated it's kind of funny uh let's see welcome your passengers be nice duh isn't it sad you gotta tell people to be nice uh let's see mention animals when you spot them yeah because otherwise you're talking about well the elephant's up there i i don't see any elephants uh you're supposed to be a rally driver experience the, experiencing this for the first time 
So you got to do that. Uh, De-emphasize the flamingos. <laughs> Everybody knows about the flamingos. They're everywhere. So yes, there was a flock of flamingos out there. Point them out, mention them, and then move on quickly. Uh, don't be an animal expert. So practice your facts with phrases like I've heard and the locals say. In other words, you want to sound like you're learning this too and discovering it. Be surprised. Interrupt yourself. Describe where to look. Since you can't point, you must always describe where guests should look. Because you're supposed to have two hands on the wheel. Hey, wow, look over to the right. That's really cool. And why, oh my goodness, on the left side, there's this. Uh, use humor. Uh, throughout the script, they have jokes in there. And most of us would emphasize the jokes, not the facts. Or we'd blend the jokes in with the facts. Because we want it to be educational. Uh, refer to your Land Rover as a Land Rover. Avoid car, truck, Jeep, or vehicle. Use script material during gaps. Do not stop uh, unless you absolutely have to. Avoid saying, ladies and gentlemen, it's too presentational. Don't suggest exiting the Land Rover. So when you're driving by the crocodiles, don't say something like, who's in the mood for a swim? <laughs> Avoid religious references. Don't say, oh my God, oh Lord, or even holy cow. That's interesting. But yeah, people get offended easily. Don't remind the navigator on the markers. Avoid sexual references. Stay clear on these, even if they seem harmless. That's good advice, even today. Uh, have a good answer. After the crocodile pit, if you decide to ask the navigator which way to go, you need a good excuse if you're not going to follow his directions. Uh, let's see. Be honest on the river portion. Uh, should have a fun demeanor during the animal segment, but you need to be, be very serious and appear truly panicked when the pontoon bridge begins to break. <laughs> and then uh, just little bits and pieces from here on. So it's all broken down, if you can see it, into chunks, portions. So getting into the vehicle, starting out, approaching the first wooden bridge. So again, it's all bits and pieces. And the dark, bold lines were your bullet points. Those were the things that you had to do, you had to incorporate. And then the other lines are ones that you could add in as needed or adjust. And none of us said any of these things word for word. We customized them and made them all our own. So for the elephants, uh, who here knows how long elephants live? Let him answer. These elephants can actually live 60 to 75 years, long enough to see about three different generations of Cape Buffalo in their lifetimes. I never mentioned the Cape Buffalo. What I would say would be they can actually live 60 to 75 years, long enough to need a cane. So would they hold the cane with their trunk? So again, you take the line, you make it your own. And they do that for each and every one of the animals. So there's a section here for the zebras, the wildebeests, which were sometimes on, sometimes not, uh, the scimitar horned oryx, flamingos, cape buffalo, white rhino, the Nile crocodiles, and then there's a whole, let's see, it's one, two, three, four, it's five pages of the water portion and stuff to say and do and act like. And, and then, of course, you had to improvise. The scimitar horned oryx, at the time that uh, I was there, there weren't any in the wild. Or if there were, the numbers were very, very small. So Bush Gardens was actually part of the program to revitalize uh, the scimitar horned oryx, to in reintroduce them back in the wild and repopulate them because they were pretty much extinct. And they're actually doing much, much better. I think I heard they were removed from the endangered list. Don't quote me on that. I could look it up, but, but they're doing much better. But at the time, Bush Gardens was one of the few places that had them. And they did something that was very interesting in that when the females were in heat, the males would actually drink their urine to find out if they were in heat or not. And so every now and then you're coming by and you, of course, they're animals. They're doing what nature does and they're leaking and then you'd see the other one drinking it as they're going, and it's like, ooh! But you had to be ready for an answer for that. That's not in the script. Uh, so what do you say? Well, you tell them the truth. It was a weird deal when you saw that. When you would have people call out the name of the rhino, not knowing they were doing that. Or uh, one of the things that the rhinos were is they were actually trained to uh, go to the bathroom in one place, kind of like a litter box. And so you drive in, that's not in the script. That's not in the animal facts. But hey, there is this giant pile of rhino poop there that you kind of need to address the poop in the situation. So <laughs> we had a joke about 
it look, it's Mount Poop. Or uh, something like that. Or, wow, get a load of the fresh smells of Africa. So we had a line that acknowledged it that wasn't in the script. So you had to learn to stay on script, but also go off script. And that little bit of improv that little bit of interaction, uh, the little bit of being ready for whatever it throws at you, made the difference between a good driver and a mediocre one. Uh, in fact, my daughter was telling me a little bit earlier today that Rhino Rally was her favorite ride at Busch Gardens. Why? Because of that interaction. And that ended up holding true when we went to Silver Dollar City. Um, and I'm going to actually recreate my conductor narration here uh, in the next couple weeks. But the same idea. You've got your script. You've got your bullet points. But be ready for when you go off of that because there will be times you need to to adjust the situations or to what people do or to what's happening or in the case of Silver Dollar City when the snake decides that it wants to crawl across your robbery area because we had a black rat snake that was about yay big that every now and then middle of the show you'd hear people on the train it's a snake you gotta adjust <laughs> so scripts are very helpful there are uh, lots of information in them but learning when to go off of them is also uh, a big, huge thing. Um, and then even at the last, they've even got some filler lines in there. But neat piece of history for something that is no longer going to come back. So that's a little look at scripts and how important they are and um, keeping them throughout history and using them and being able to adjust. Do you have an, an experience where you've had to use a script? and then had to go off script or customize it, I'd love to hear it. Uh, please share it with me in the comments below. Were there lines that you remember from Rhino Rally that people said? I'd love to know that. I know a lot of people are going to recite the robbery at Silver Dollar City, but anybody out there remember Rhino Rally's lines? I'd love to hear. Thank you so much to my patrons and supporters. Their support means the world to me, and they've been able to help in so many ways. If you want to know more about that and the perks that come with it, check out the description below. There's a lot of neat stuff coming up this year too, and they're the first ones to find out. Thank you so incredibly much for watching though. God bless. This is me stepping on something on my floor. <laughs>